Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Cells as the Basis of Life. This is video number 15 and this time we're going to delve just a little bit into some of the very important biochemistry that's associated with eukaryotes and also just a little bit of a, a touch on um, some of the prokaryotic biochem as well. This is a very, very complex area and this is going to oversimplify it, I know, but I think it'll at least give us a little bit of background and then you can build on that if you want to have a little bit of a look at some of these processes in a little bit more detail at the end of the video. So what we need to do is we need to investigate the biochemical processes of photosynthesis, cell respiration and the removal of cellular products and wastes in eukaryotic cells. So we're going to focus here on photosynthesis and cell respiration. Uh, a separate video is dealt with the removal of cellular products and wastes uh, and that uh, primarily is carried out by lysosomes. But in this particular video, we're going to be looking at the function of the chloroplasts and the mitochondria as they are critical to the processes of photosynthesis and respiration, respectively. Photosynthesis and respiration are two complementary processes. And what do we mean by that? What we mean is that the products of one are the reactants of the other. The they're both very complex processes and in fact they're both complex processes that have been oversimplified in a lot of ways but it allows us to study these processes and to get a bit of an understanding about what's going on uh, in both photosynthesis and respiration and to try and uh, understand that there are several layers of complexity below that surface um, that we don't really need to get into a lot at this early stage of your biology careers. What we're going to do is to try and peel away some of that simplicity, look at a little bit more of the complexity associated with both of these processes and to see if we can understand a little bit more about why they occur in, in plants and or animals and what the benefits uh, are of these two processes. Um, so let's have a look at each one in a little bit of detail. So firstly, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is carried out in two distinct phases. Now there are, again, more steps involved here than we're going to deal with, but we're going to at least try and see if we can look at the two key phases of photosynthesis and what's actually going on in each one. The equation here, which uh, I've borrowed from Blitzing Biology, has uh, a really interesting way of representing uh, the equation for photosynthesis. Usually we cancel these six water molecules uh, and just put six waters on the reactant side of this particular equation and the reason that we do that is because in any equation like we do in mathematics if you have like terms on both sides you cancel them out. But this is a more accurate way of writing it because what it shows is a relationship between the water molecules and the oxygen molecules. And the first stage of photosynthesis is what we call photolysis or l the light dependent phase. This is uh, literally breaking down using light. So photo means light and lies means to cut or slice. And so this is a process that occurs in the light that allows uh, water molecules to actually be broken down into hydrogen and oxygen gas. This occurs in the grana of the um, of the chloroplasts and specifically in the little stacks of thylakoid membranes that contain chlorophyll. It's the chlorophyll that absorbs that energy that takes in the, the light energy and it uses that energy to split the water molecules into hydrogen ions and oxygen molecules. So that means that when we look at all of the water that's being split into hydrogen and oxygen if we look at how much we're producing, then we actually need 12 of these to produce six uh, oxygen molecules. That is the source of the oxygen that's released in photosynthesis, and it comes directly from this photolyzing of the water molecules. And that's why this is a slightly more accurate way of representing it, even though we haven't um, uh, removed the like terms or cancelled out the like terms because it shows us that those water molecules when they're broken down in this first phase um, are the ones that produce oxygen. Now the diagram below is a more complex one and I think what's important here is to notice that there are a couple of important energy transport molecules. We've already talked about one of them before ATP 
ATP is an energy carrier in the cell and it's actually produced in this first stage of photosynthesis and that energy is going to be very important for the second phase. But there's another important um, little carrier molecule of energy and electrons here called NADP. And this little system is also something that allows the facilitation of electrons to be moved into the second phase of photosynthesis and that's the uh, and that's the next phase which we'll have a look at in the next slide. So the second phase is a light independent phase it doesn't need light it can occur uh, during the daytime but it doesn't need light to for this particular phase to uh, be undertaken and this occurs in the stroma. This is the stage where the hydrogen that's come from the water molecule, so the breakdown of the water molecules released oxygen and the hydrogen is being transported through into the stroma. And it's being carried there along with electrons um, and uh, lots of energy and that allows for the transfer of or, or the fixing, uh, if you prefer, of the hydrogen to the carbon dioxide. Um, that process of linking hydrogen and carbon dioxide is what leads us to the formation of the carbohydrate glucose, C6H12O6. Again, we, we are oversimplifying things, but we have to because it's such a complex system. This process is known as the Calvin cycle, and if you really want to um, be scratching your head for a little bit, go and have a look at the Calvin cycle. It's a great biochemical pathway, um, but it is uh, more complex than you need to look at for your uh, Year 11 biology course. The important thing, I guess, is to understand that the way that the chloroplasts are structured is that there are distinct regions. The, the granite and the stroma are the two that we kind of focus on as the two distinct regions that we notice when we look at the um, chloroplasts. And we notice that the granite themselves are made up of these uh, individual little stacks of thylakoids. And this is where the concentration of the chloroplasts is. It's where the first stage or the first phase occurs. And then we have that transfer of hydrogen and energy and electrons into the stroma for this second phase. Of course, once glucose has been produced, glucose can be used uh, to build complex carbohydrates. But it can also be used for proteins and for lipid construction. So a lot of the bulk uh, biomass of the plant is built from this fundamental glucose building block. And of course, glucose is also important in the process of respiration. So this is a critical molecule. It's certainly not a waste product. It's a critical product of the process of photosynthesis that is used by living things, especially plants, and then also um, animals as we are unable to um, go through the process of photosynthesis. And so therefore, the glucose that's required by all heterotrophs must be consumed. Thanks for watching.